This video is brought to you by Midway USA. Support the channel by choosing Midway for your shooting and outdoor supplies. This was over 58, the pride of the Czech Republic. Impact! Neutralize! Impact! Neutralize! Impact! Neutralize! Impact! Neutralized! Impact! Neutralized! Impact! Neutralized! Impact! Neutralized! Impact! Off the right. Neutralized. All right, 625, 650, fire for effect. You ready for this? Send it. Just short. Impact. Neutralize. Woo! <laughs> okay, Love I it. don't it, think I could push that any farther with six, seven, six, two, three, nine. Love it. But I mean, uh, so I experienced the most issues I think with uh, with the windage. Yeah. Because mid course that wind actually blew in, and I think uh, around what three fifty four, I started realizing oh I need to push it to the left. Mm. So yeah, your um, misses at three hundred were both off the right. Yeah, yeah, the three hundred, the the three hundred misses. I think I don't. I think I don't know if you called it. I didn't. Uh, oh, okay. You so, saw it and corrected it. So okay, so that's that's what happened with some of the misses as it pushed out was uh, the wind coming in and me mentally needing to compensate for it. And we're looking at around like one thirty seconds, so two minutes and ten. Not bad. Not bad for a. Uh, basically a bone stock comm block style rifle, seven, shooting 76239, I think. We haven't shot another 76239, have we? No. No. Nope. Yeah, so it's a very challenging. Uh, it's a very challenging system to shoot because of, as you said, the heightened, uh, the heightened levels of impact that are experienced on things like elevation as well as uh, the mm -hmm. impact of wind. Which now, full value at the moment, definitely going to uh, definitely definitely going to be felt on this type of a course. Now we have shot this, we have tried this on the course before with a 2X. Mm. Uh, the also primary arms 2X uh, prism optic, which the 3X did not exist at the time we tried it. And so the main difference outside of the increased magnification, so that makes it easier for me to spot, was also that this thing has better wind holds. And it was easier for me to use those wind holds this time to greater effect. Um, but Josh, I think uh, we do have a lot to talk about being basically the only rifle that I'm very comfortable to shoot with 76239 on this style of course. But 
what else is there? Uh, what else is there that we could talk about right now that we can bring uh, bring to the uh, studio? Yeah, let's go take it at the uh, the debrief. See you there. Well, hello there. I was only at the local Cavava searching for a delicious vintage. I hope you're enjoying the show thus far. Shows like this, they're made possible by Slate Black Industries. But more importantly, we have the support of the patrons of Patreon. That's right, this magnificent group of men and women. They support us financially, intellectually, and more importantly, emotionally. So today, I'd like to invite you. Come, join us, become one of us. Together, we could discover the intricacies of firearms development. But if not, that's okay. We'd be just as happy to hear from you in the comments section below. But for now, let's get on with it. Welcome in. That was a speedway run for you guys with the 762 by 39 with a fairly limited optical solution with a three power mm -hmm. prism. And yet, Henry, you were able to tag out to 650 with that setup and get multiple hits on each target. Yeah. Talk us through that. And what do we think this actually proves in terms of the effectiveness of 762 by 39. All right, so let's let's look at what the course is to begin with. I know we've done a couple of these speedways at this point, but we're asking me, the shooter, to plop down, load the rifle, and engage targets from the closest one all the way out to 650, potentially a bonus at 720, all while most of the time self-spotting the target, meaning I need to know where, if there are misses, where they're hit, where they're missing. And Josh is really just confirming that the the, the hits are effective. Um, couple things here: seven six two three nine is not the world renowned long range competitive cartridge. In fact, people compare that to a supersonic three hundred blackout, <laughs> which is a world renowned short barrel rifle cartridge. That's a different story we can talk about, 300 Blackout. But the cartridge itself is not, you know, has lent itself to a reputation of what? What would you say the effective range? Like two, 300 meters effective Yeah, range? I think most people would say that the 76239 caps at around 300 meters. Maybe you push it a little bit beyond that, but that's what yeah. most people would argue. Yeah, but I think they're they're so so there's there's two there's two long there's two distances that usually are tagged to either weapon system or cartridges or a weapon system that shoots a particular cartridge. One is a maximum effective range, the mirror, and then the second one is the maximum uh, the maximum range, the the overall range that it could it could get to. So like yep. 76239 typically people say oh it's just good to 300 meters i think honestly there may be some truth to that but at the same time not entirely because we're also looking at the maximum range and not just maximum effective range um, the other thing comes down to the prism and quite frankly i don't think i could have done this run without the prism optic um the prism on this VZ58 is to where you could just quick detach it and use the iron sights. And that's very, that's pretty awesome. The package itself is a pretty sweet little carbine because it's very lightweight, it's extremely lightweight and has a cool last round bolt hold open. The magazines are super lightweight. It, the checks did a really good job designing the rifle. And in some instances, I don't know if I would say it's more accurate than the AK, but it certainly seems like it pushes better accuracy than the AK whenever I take it well, out. Well, from range. our our Kalashnikov accuracy test from a year or two back, where we patterned, I think it was like ten different AK or AK mm -hmm. variants. One of which, yes, we know the not AK AK here with the VZ uh, fifty eight. Um, I think it was number two. Or well, technically the top two, according to that list, are not AK AKs, and it was the Galil Ace and the VZ58, and right. Then shortly following after was a Niner, 
Um, so maybe, yeah, maybe it's even shooting better than an AK, but all of that put together, I mean, this is a pretty, let's say, combat-y, if that's a word, combat-y uh, weapon system, kind of the equivalent of an M4 with an ACOG, except shooting comm block cartridges. Mm -hmm. uh, and seeing this push out, I think I first, I, I had my first, I dropped my first miss, what was it, 350 or 4? And then I, but but really like those were quickly recovered. Yeah, I I would say that the the major piece here for somebody who's watching this who's maybe seen some of the other speedway runs is this is the first like just basic sort of basic infantry style rifle or service style rifle that we've shot that wasn't taking every possible advantage. Right, because even when we shot like the Block Two with a Scar, we were shooting those with seventy seven. Yeah, I think the Block Two we shot with an ACOG, but we were shooting with seventy yeah. sevens. Um, the Scar we shot with the one to eight with seventy sevens. So they were really souped up systems. And the other stuff we were shooting are precision systems, or and, and the M sixteen A two, which actually oh, the A two forgot you did that. I think the A two beat this one on the score though. I forgot you did that. that that's yeah, true. I had like I had no misses. I was put a put a link to to that run because yeah. that run was disgusting. You you yeah, shot that, that so pretty, well. That was a pretty cool run, yeah. But I mean, that said, like but, we're not we're not looking at we're not looking at like can a rifle. Obviously, you 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 get maximum advantage if you don't miss. But at the same time, like as a shooter, when I'm there, I'm just trying to um, get the rounds on target as quickly as possible, and I think the ones that I could do that with ease and you could see how tight the 150 and 200 and 300 groups were on the target. Those were very effective to engage the targets. Once it mm -hmm. crested at the 400, I think I like there's one shot that hit the berm in front of it. Um, that's when it started to get difficult. I mean, it wasn't just like the sighting system per se, but Knowing the drop in the windage uh, uh, for seven six two three nine and trying to yeah. do that under under a time constraint, uh, to me, I mean, I'm sure there's better shooters out there who could who could do even better on the seven six two. Maybe a Czech guy who's been running his seven six two VZ fifty eight his entire life probably could do better than I could. But um, when it came, when it got to that distance, I had to use a lot more of my brain power to compensate to, to figure out if it would hit. Uh, so yeah. when we're well, talking you can about see, by the time Henry, by the time you go to 650, if if you go back and watch the the projectile um, flight path mm -hmm. on the actual spotter footage, it like leaves the screen. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it leaves the it leaves yeah. the view. <laughs> it's just like yeah. rainbow shots. Well, I was into the... I think I was aiming at almost like the 800 or thousand yard distance. Where the Chevron was, maybe yeah. maybe even taller than that. Maybe it was in the blue, but it was. Uh, by the time it got to that distance, it was just. I mean that's that's why I said I I I was like I mean half jokingly I was calling back to Josh you know six fifty you know far for effect. <laughs> All right, six twenty five, six fifty, far for effect. You ready for this? Send it. It was kind of like lobbing artillery, so I was kind of just joking about that. But in reality, yeah, 650 is, like, could you say it's it's definitely not in the maximum effective range, but can you land rounds at that distance? Obviously, you yeah. could. Yeah. But, but is it Again, that's a sub that's a sub-torso plate. Yeah. Right? It's it's that The 650 is a decent size. I think it's 15 no, it's like inches this. across like, or 16 like, like inches big. across, but it's... This... Is how big it actually is. That's it. It's not that big. It's inside of your shoulders. Mm -hmm. It is inside of the average human shoulders. So it's a it's a torso sized target that you are able to hit at with seven six two three nine and a three power. So mm -hmm. again, when we start talking about it, it all goes back to the the bit that we had when we joined into or we started shooting we started at a time where that idea of the ak being a 200 meter gun or a 250 300 meter gun max was and i, I appreciate i'm using ak here but 762 by 39 
that was what it was thought of. And the idea that you could push it beyond that was like totally nuts. Yeah. Um, at least, again, at least when you looked at like the circles of people that we were shooting with and the what was what was available on the internet at the time, like it was a very different place. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, as you've said, as we've started the show and been doing it all these years and now seeing these rounds being able to being able to put rounds on target way beyond what we what we used to be able to think we could do. Yeah. I mean, I think at the end of the day, there's going to be there's also going to be people who argue, you know, like whether the prism optic was a hindrance or, or a plus, because technically the prism optic bottoms out at 500. Like yeah. the 650, I was very much using the ranging bracket underneath the prism to, to shoot. And that's not, yep. that's not a, the ranging bracket is not there for you to hold. You can use it. It's not there for you to hold. Whereas with iron sights, you actually have a 600 meter slot, right? Mm-hmm. But if I shot this course with iron sights, it would have been significantly more difficult to adjust at the four and 500 uh, distances. Yeah. So the iron sight that that whole like ACOG and basic rifle concept is actually pretty powerful in extending yourself past the you know the two to three hundred meter position and increasing your shot effectiveness at the two or three hundred uh, distance, especially if you have a, a scope like this, the ACSS that is cammed specifically for the bullet drop compensation for seven six two three nine. Uh, so if I were to take this, I mean. I've said in the past that, you know, if I had to go to the Middle East these days, which I don't, but if I did, um, honestly, the AK-103 with like one of these small prism optics that you can QD is a pretty good option. Uh, This is basically very similar to that. Like the 3X that they offer is actually better than the 2X when you're shooting at distance targets because it has a wind leads on it. And that's actually quite useful when there's like a seven mile an hour drift. That's that that wind lead is really useful. Or if you're shooting at a, let's say, traversing target, like a target that is conveniently moving at a seven mile per hour, which is very close to like a quick a quick shuffle, uh, <laughs> then then Good maybe that's, jog. Yeah, that's 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 pretty useful. Uh, but when um, when it comes to this, I think. The reason I wanted to show this particular loadout is because like the AK-103 with a prism optic, it's really easy to QD that optic off the top if you don't need it. And you want to strip for weight. Um, you want a lower signature to, to slide that thing somewhere and you put the, uh, the folding stock on it. These are pretty effective things that you don't necessarily see the benefits on a flat range. You see that in practice. You don't see it on a flat range per se. I mean, pretty effective loadout. Now, the VZ-58, unfortunately, uses a different type of magazine than the AK. Um, because yeah. of that, like, even though they're actually more available in the battlefield than you would think nowadays. But still, it, it, volume-wise, it does not even compare to the AKM, AK-103 type of rifles. And the aftermarket support and just parts availability to keep those things running. So um, I love the 58. I absolutely love it. You know, it's, it's a great, it's a really interesting system. And in this loadout, it is a very flexible and powerful combat loadout that is somewhat minimalistic to where you could stretch normally like a two or 300 meter effective rifle to a little bit longer distance. But at the same time, um, I think that that's where it comes down to, like, you know, when you're talking about practicality of things or ammunition, you'll have it overseas, but magazines, I don't know. But hmm. we're straying off on a completely different. To- I, I, this is I'm purely talking about this because I actually really like this system. And on top of that, I don't know if you guys saw at the very opening when I loaded the magazine, I clopped the mag in and then I just did a like a quick tap on with my trigger finger and that bolt went forward. Our boys, Polinar, Tactical, Giga, and those guys, they, they, they have a little, um, little, um, bolt release button. You could just tap the bolt hold open button with your trigger finger and send it home. So your reloads are actually way faster than an AK. 
especially if you use the uh, bolt hold open mechanism that Polinar has. Um, nice. System wise, I mean, it's such a cool system. I just wish they had more interest in developing the aftermarket support for it. I really do. Yeah. I mean, you don't even have rails that are. I mean, you have rails, but they're not like the AK. Like the AK rails are as plentiful, of, uh, if not as equal as as the AR fifteen variety out there these days. But yes, and well, with that, gang. For those of you who have stuck around for the end of this session, we do appreciate you. You are the OGs. <laughs> uh, go ahead and do all the good YouTube stuff. You know, the likes, the comments, the subscribes. Uh, check out the Patreon. You, know, you get early access to videos as well as direct back and forth commentary with uh, with us and that means you get to help us with all of the ridiculous questions <laughs> that we have for uh, for that group and uh, lastly nine hole podcast be sure to check out uh, that episode the episodes over there as well and uh, until next time we'll see you on the range Seven one six is Bill Knight six four Vic eight packs red con one green to green top copy over. Bill Knight six this is seven one six Roger over. One six Bill Knight one one pack.